2022's Crimes of the Furniture, I mean Future, review and thoughts. I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I really loved. The, let's see, there will be some jokes, none of the expense of members of minorities. We'll get into some serious topics. And I realize this video is long, I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. I start the video with a review where I'm almost definitely not going to spoil anything. If I decide over the course of the review that I want to spoil something, I'm going to verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger while I'm spoiling so you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. As soon as I end the review itself and get into the thought section, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. Yes, I am finishing up the... This is this is the last David Cronenberg movie that I currently have access to. And let's see. Yeah, so the yeah. This movie's rated R. It's a pretty hard R, as is to be expected for David Cronenberg. Yeah. Um the uh, the MPA rated it R for strong, disturbing, violent content and grisly images, graphic nudity, and some language. The IMDb Parent Guide rates sex and nudity, violence and gore, and frightening and intense scenes severe, profanity is moderate, alcohol, drugs, and smoking none. And yeah, it's it's a lot. Let's uh, yeah. Um, I understand why some people felt it was excessive. I suppose I understand why some people thought that the the idea of it being excessive was overblown I don't know I don't watch every horror movie that comes out today I guess maybe this isn't that you know I'm I'm not personally offended I've got I've grown fairly thick skin elephant hide if you will when it comes to gore and violence <sighs> Yeah, um, this is definitely one of those movies where if you have to ask, if if you feel like, you know, what this, is this too gory for me? Yes, the answer is yes, without a doubt. I do think that the, you know, Cronenberg tends to assign some meaning to it. There's, It's never just a special effect, even though his effects are quite good, it's never just that. And... Yeah, but but for sure, if you're not, yeah, do do not make this the first gory movie. Honestly, if you make this the first gory movie you watch, I almost kind of want to hear from you. Uh, drop drop a comment down below if this was the first time that you saw. It. Yeah, um, I've watched this movie once. I just got done watching it right before I hit record on this video. And, yeah, so the, the plot summary, I'm just going to quote IMDb here. Humans adapt to a synthetic environment with new transformations and mutations. With his partner Caprice, Sol Tensor, celebrity performance artist, publicly showcases the metamorphosis of his organs in avant-garde performances. And, let's see, the... Yeah, so this is uh, this is both written and directed by Cronenberg, and let's see. So yeah, uh, real quick, I've been a fan of Cronenberg since at least the early 2000s. I've watched everything of his I could get a copy of or just have access to. You know, these last two are streaming. Ranked worst to best, keeping in mind I love all of them, they're all amazing. I'm ranking how much I love them, not whether or not I love them all. The Brood, The Dead Zone, Naked Lunch, Eastern Promises, Scanners, Spider, A History of Violence, A Dangerous Method, Existence, Fly, and Videodrome. And I just realized that it's, yes, you may have noticed Crimes of the Future does not yet appear on that list. I will update that ranking at the end of the review itself, right before I get into thoughts, with where I, I place this. And, yeah, uh, this is very much a return to form for Cronenberg. Uh, the Fly is the last I know for sure. Maybe Dead Ringers does it, but otherwise, 
Cronenberg has not made a philosophical body horror film since those, even if there has been horror, like Existence and Spider, and or practical effects, like Naked Lunch. And, let's see, right, uh, I recommend reading, you know, on the, let's see, yeah, on IMDb, the, the user reviews, the top 100 spoiler-free ones that gave it a 7 or higher. I, I swear I don't have a problem with negative reviews of stuff that I like. It's just, and I'm not saying that you have to love this. I'm, you know, I, I could tell from reading there's people who normally love Cronenberg where this movie wasn't really for them. It's just that a lot of the negative reviews, they don't really, they don't seem to fully be able to put words to what's, bad about it they some of them can like describe okay so it's different from what I used to like this but they don't really explain why that's bad other than just that there's you know we live in this world where all media is really curated and it's I'm, I'm not saying I'm above it I, I watch way too much stuff from the same if I just mentioned that this is the you know this is by far my first foray into Cronenberg but just we gotta get better as a culture um, at, at watching something or playing or listening to that's different from what we're used to and give it a chance and try to actually take it on its own terms. Uh, so, right. Um, some critics have noted, this is from reviews of other Cronenberg films, all Cronenberg films are about identity. If you're looking for recurring themes that run through Cronenberg's work, there are few regularly visited than the idea of body modifications and how modern technology causes people to undergo physical changes that reflect either their true identities or the way they want the world to perceive them. And Cronenberg thinks there's comedy in all of his movies and is happy with how funny they are. And yeah, this is very much like this is this is the Cronenbergiest thing to ever Cronenberg, as others have noted. Th yeah, modern technology causes causing people to undergo physical changes is very much yeah that is the the central thing here, and it is definitely a movie that you know there are certain things you know you'll want to mentally prepare yourself for before you go into it make sure there's subtitles if, if at all possible because the certain characters really don't speak up in in this movie like Viggo Mortensen and Kristen Stewart a lot of their lines are are very like just like muttered or whispered and that's obviously frustrating if you don't have you know subtitles or the or the sound up really high i i almost never watch things without subtitles but that's you know i'm, I'm danish that's apparently a, a thing here I, I wasn't actually always aware that that when i was a kid i thought oh that's this is just how everyone watches everything if there's always subtitles not only when it's stuff that's not in danish we have subtitles for a lot of danish things as well so but yeah, um, I do think that it is purposeful that they're, you know, whispering and, and muttering. The, you know, Vigo, Vigo Mortensen's character, Saul Tenser, spends a lot of this movie in pain. He is going through a situation that is legitimately, like, like, like one morning he wakes up and he's like, ah, uh, I, got a, I got a throat thing, you know, my throat really hurts, I can barely talk. And, yeah, for a while, it's just like that, you know, and he does, yeah, I, like, it, he doesn't act like, oh, no, is there something wrong? Do I need to see a doctor? You know, there's actually, there's a scene where someone says, you know, I was advised to go see a doctor, and, ah, see, how, let's see, how do I describe this without giving something away. L let's just say there's something else going on there, you know. And they, you know, fairly early on, they mention, you know, people no longer get infections, get, you know, traditional illnesses. And, yeah, you know, he, he doesn't think of this as something that might, like, really 
you know, kill him or at least hurt him a lot physically, he's just like, ugh, now this, you know, like, like waking up and having, like, the slight back problem or, or something, you know, just, and, and Kristen Stewart's character is basically, she, there's some, there's some self-repression going on there. Some of the time it feels like she can either barely get the words out or barely keep herself from saying and doing so much more than she actually is. I've, I've been quite a fan of hers for some years now, you know, I, I really consider, yeah, she's underrated, mostly by people who haven't watched the stuff she's actually really good in. She's really, really good in Snow White and the Huntsman, for example. I hear, you know, some, some people say she's bad in Twilight, but it's always seemed to me like an issue of direction, not of acting talent. Like, she, as far as I can tell from, from clips and people talking about it, she's she did what she was directed to. Now, yeah, the, the you know, yeah, some people watched this movie and knew her from Twilight, and they were like, oh, this is Twilight all over again. I haven't watched those movies, but I've seen a lot of clips. This really does not strike me as, oh, she's just doing Twilight again. Let's also keep in mind, I, I don't think I mentioned this enough in my other videos on Cronenberg movies. David Cronenberg tends to get the kind of performance he wants out of an actor. You'll note, like a lot of people you know, watch his movies and are like, ah, you know, I don't know, it feels like bad acting to me because it's it's different. It's There's a certain level of restraint and like down, um, tone, tone down quality to it, but the acting is quite consistent. Like, you know, compare the acting in Scanners 1 to two and especially three, you know, it gets increasingly campy over the course of that trilogy, and yeah, like Cronenberg got the performances out of his cast that make sense for them, you know, so his, I cannot believe I'm blanking on his name, I'll, I'll have it momentarily, um, the, the antagonist character of the the first scanners uh or i suppose one of the yeah the the character played by michael ironside you know he has there is certainly a, a degree of of intensity to it but it's a sort of quiet tension where like my michael, michael ironside like you know the first thing when i think of him the first thing that always pops to my mind is starship troopers where he's like barking orders and like shouting and delivering motivational monologues and his performance in Scanners is completely different and that's not because he fundamentally changed in those 16 years between those two movies coming out that's because what Cronenberg wanted out of him was this more toned down kind of thing and yeah you know the the um, I have never seen Scott Speedman the way he is in this movie before. It was it was a real joy. Um, some people really hate him in the Underworld movies. I thought he was fine. Like, I didn't... You know, he wasn't some, like, big, amazing kind of, you know... Like, the kind of, you know, he's 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 meant to be like attractive and there's supposed to be a, a quality to him where you want to see you know yeah you want to see things go well for him you know obviously I'm not saying that age-wise it would have made sense but I think some someone like George Clooney would have you know could have added to that role I don't know if that's Scott Speedman or direction maybe writing uh, I thought he was quite good in The Strangers but yeah, he's he's so much more low key and restrained in in this movie, and like honestly, like I knew he was gonna be in this. 
I think I was halfway through the movie before I was sure, oh, that actually is him, because there was a point where he he did, like, a smile. Part, maybe part of it is that he's, his face is completely covered in, in a beard, but, like, there was a, t a time where he smiled, and I was like, all oh, right, that's, yeah, that's definitely him, but I, I really appreciate that, that Cronenberg is one of those directors who can get really unusual performances out of actors, and the... You know, I, th I think the fact that Kristen Stewart, Leia Sadu, and Scott Speedman, you know, were, were cast in this. Like, Viggo Mortensen, by this point, it's like, okay, he's maybe a little bit of a weirdo. And I'd say that with love, you know. That's, he's he sometimes chooses movies where, you know, and, and this is, yeah, like, Mortensen and Cronenberg have worked together like, what is it, four or five times or something by now, so, you know, not a surprise to anyone, but for a little while, it seemed like Kristen Stewart and Scott Speedman were going for these more, like, uh, roles that sort of, sort of mainstream success, you know, and I am aware that this is not the first time Kristen Stewart has taken a very unusual role, but I do really appreciate it. Like, this is very much, you know, yeah, uh, th this this is not a career move you make if you want the mainstream. Like, there's literally a scene where she's, like, inspecting someone's internal organs and is, like, you know, fascinated with, like, you know, you, you don't watch her in this movie and think, I bet she would be a great, like, romantic lead or, or something, you know. And, you know, Le Leia Sadu and Kristen Stewart, conventionally attractive young women, you know, acting, t a lot of people, and I don't blame them, in, in those circumstances would choose a more safe route. But they, you know, they know that they have more to offer. And, yeah, you know, this, like, I've... I've seen Les say do uh, you know several times before, and yeah, you know she she really there's there's a lot. It's it's clear she can she can convey a lot with fairly little, as Stewart and Mortensen also can. And. Let's see, there was at least one other thing. Yes, uh, one thing to definitely, something something I saw others take issue with. The movie sets up a mystery at the very start. Like, you know, the, the movie opens with something that really, like, grabs your attention and, you know, you want to see what's going on here. And... Throughout the rest of the movie, a lot of time is de dedicated to other stuff. Like, I can imagine there were probably people who sat down to watch this, like, bated breath, or like, what happened? At the, you know, what is the deal with, with that opening? And then there's just a lot of, you know, it, every so often someone will mention, oh, by the way, this thing happened, they, you know, maybe ears perk up. I don't think the movie is boring. It's much too fascinating and well made to be boring, but I can totally understand people who expected it to be more about, you know, and it's to to more about what we see in the opening, and that's not technically it's not quite an unfair thing to expect from Cronenberg. Like I think a lot of the negative reviews unfair expectation like they they some of them seem to not know who Cronenberg is, which I mean, I, I respect, like, there's people, you know, if you watch this movie, you know, it, yeah, back in 2022, if you just turned 18, you just got old enough, and you wanted to start watching R-rated movie, or 16, whatever, you know, if you just got old enough to, to start watching these, yeah, like, you're not old enough to remember the, the kind of, you know, I, I, and again, I'm not old enough to remember the kind of, of, Ah, what's the word? The the name the the kind of perception there was around him, especially in the you know eighties and nineties. I 
got, you know, over watching several of his movies, I got to a point where I understood what he was going for. I, I didn't write reviews for his movies before I understood him, you know, anyway. But the, yeah, it is not unreasonable to expect that a Cronenberg movie will spend a lot of the movie exploring the main thing that was set up in the opening because the fly does this scanners video drone certainly early sets up the the thing that it's about but here you know i i don't know if i want to i don't think i want to give away exactly what it is because it's a very like just you know i think all you should know about the opening of this movie is it sets up a mystery but the yeah you know it just i i'm not sure if cronenberg himself was super interested in the the mystery you know the the just he seems more interested in the world that he's created and it is an extremely interesting world you know so yeah you can you can understand why but it does set certain expectations that first thing i don't know that i think i no i wouldn't quite say that it's like a mistake but i can understand why you know i i don't know that i personally was frustrated by it but i i can definitely understand people who were Right, yeah, this was actually Cronenberg's first original script since Existence. And, yeah, the script is largely adapted from an earlier project Cronenberg had written called Painkillers, which was in development in 2002 and had Nicolas Cage attached. Right, and Kristen Stewart actually replaced Natalie Portman in the role of Timlin. And I do absolutely think, you know, there's there's roles where I don't know. I'm not sure that Kristen Stewart, okay, other than the age thing, I'm not sure she would have made as good of a Padme Amidala, which, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of the prequels, but I do think that Natalie Portman has a certain, she's able to carry herself in a way where you could buy okay this is this is royalty this is a queen and i'm not sure that i've seen you know and i've uh, yes snow white technically you know technically could go on to become a queen but that's also something in that movie she sort of struggles with you know Personally, I I do I am quite happy that it was Kristen Stewart who did right and yeah this is the second film by Cronenberg to be titled Crimes of the Future the first one was in 1970 and the yeah the plot was different I have not watched that one I would like to and th yeah this is also his first feature film in eight years. And, yeah, he predicted that due to the film's subject matter and graphic violence, there would be walkouts as early as five to ten minutes into the movie, he predicted correctly. And, yes, this is the fifth collaboration between Cronenberg and Mortensen. History of Violence, Eastern Promises, A Dangerous Method. Oh, Falling. That's right, yeah, I have not watched that one, but that was... Mortensen directing Cronenberg. And let's see. Yeah, and this is, yeah, uh, film composer Howard Shore's 18th collaboration with David Cronenberg since 1979 film The Brood. And. Um, this is the first feature of Cronenberg has made without cinematographer Peter Sushitsky since they first worked together on Dead Ringers, 1988. And let's see. Yeah. Um, Cronenberg made a statement 
for Can Crimes of the Future is a meditation on human evolution, specifically the ways in which we have had to take control of the process because we have created such powerful environments that did not exist previously. Crimes of the Future is an evolution of things I've done before. Fans will see key references to other scenes and moments from my other films. There's a continuity of my understanding of technology is connected to the human body. Technology is always an extension of the human body, even when it seems to be very mechanical and non-human. A fist becomes enhanced by a club or stone that you throw, but ultimately that club or stone is just an extension of some potency that the human body already has. At this critical junction in human history, one wonders, can the human body evolve to solve problems we have created? Can the human body evolve a process to digest plastics and artificial materials, not only as part of a solution to the climate crisis, but also to grow, thrive, and survive? And I think that's, yeah, this is exactly, like, you may not like, you know, the, the, subgenre of movie, but it's a movie that's talking about problems we're dealing with right now. We've never, in human history, we've never dealt with something quite like climate change, and it, yeah, it is something we have to take extremely seriously, and yeah, the idea that evolution could be part of that solution, that we could, yeah, digest all this plastic that we've put into the world that, you know, yeah, what what do we do with it? It doesn't, it, um, what's the word, decompose the way that, you know, natural things do. And, right, and Cronenberg has said, the film is about the crimes committed by the human body against itself. And... Let's see. Yes. Um, right. Uh, I'm just going to briefly address. Some people really doesn't do not like that the movie is called Crimes of the Future because basically they thought this would be like Minority Report or, you know, futuristic CSI or something. And again, it's just like, <laughs> to be fair, Cronenberg did direct the the um, the Dead Zone, so it's not one hundred. You know, this is this this would not be the first time that there was a a story somewhat like that. But you just have to look at a plot. Like, I, I quoted earlier the, the IMDb one, like, that makes it pretty clear that's not what this movie is going to be. I I think I might at some point just stop reading user reviews. As occasionally, I am extremely fortunate and read something deeply stimulating, but there's just so many of them where there's just like, well, this wasn't what I expected, so I'm going to give it a really negative rating and review. Like... We gotta get better at being open to things that are different from what we're used to. Now, the the screenplay does a, a quite good job of examining these different ideas that are brought up. You know, we're we're seeing you know the the human body is changing. Is it for the worse? Is it for the better? Is it actually dangerous, or is that merely a rationalization that powerful entities use to control and hurt people? And, yeah, you know, over the course of it, there's a number of different perspectives on this idea of the, the inner beauty pageant, which Cronenberg has been fascinated with for, for decades, this idea of yeah examining inner beauty in a in a like literal inner beauty not not metaphorical inner beauty and yeah um i have thoughts i think i'll leave them for the thoughts section because there's so only so much i could say without spoiling now i'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but there the ending does somewhat fit what came before. 
I like the ending. I, I do understand why some people say that they thought there needed to be more. That it's, you know, some, some have said that this is a movie that doesn't so much end as stop. And I can see what they mean. And certainly it is, like, yeah, it's, there's definitely aspects to the ending that are not at all what one would expect from other parts of the movie. Let's, let's go with that. So, yeah, the, the characters I've mentioned, Saul Tensor, basically he is growing new organs, uh, you know, un unnecessary organs, and he then appears you know, on on stage where Caprice cuts him open and removes the the new organ. And th throughout the, the film, you know, I've already mentioned Saul appears to be in or Saul is in, in pain, which we we learn is at this point unusual. There's a lot of people who are not experiencing any pain and some have, you know, it's led some people to do things that, you know, currently in, in the real world, people don't do at least as frequently because it's intensely painful. You know, where, where like, right now, people maybe get a tattoo or a piercing or something, which, you know, there's a, there's a certain intensity of the pain, I understand, I've never experienced either, but it's... You know, yeah, that's that's something some people choose to do today. In this movie, people literally cut, you know, parts of each other open. You know, which, yeah, if there was an intense pain connected to that and people were really want for some, for, for feeling something, uh, physically, I mean, yeah, that is probably something that a number of people would, would choose to do. You know, other people in the movie talk about this this is dangerous. We've always had this. And and now it's you know, now we're it's disappearing, you know, which that is that is a reaction that there often is when things change. And I really respect that the movie doesn't really come down on either side. Like it's not really saying that I because because essentially you know the the movie has more than one faction and it's not necessarily saying that one faction are the good guys and another faction are the bad guys. The factions have very clear philosophies. They they believe certain things and they act based on those beliefs. And, you know, Cronenberg has gone on record as saying that he believes more harm has been done in the name of religion than, you know, if you compare that to just, like, sudden acts of, like, you know, if, if someone just, you know, goes goes mad and, and attacks someone else, or, or attacks someone else in the heat of the moment kind of thing, which I, you know, I agree with him on that, and and yeah, this is another exploration of that. You know, that was something he said for Videodrome, when talking about Videodrome, and it's true of both of these movies. And yeah, I, I really respect that he is willing to, because like there is the risk that, you know, some, some people might watch this movie and kind of hate Cronenberg and people like him. You know, th there's some people who believe that a movie has to have a specific message. And if you, by the end of a movie, if you don't have a clear message, then the movie has just failed. And I take issue with this point of view, and so does Cronenberg. And yeah, some people are going to hate Cronenberg and the movie because it doesn't really say... You know, basically, there's a governmental... It, it doesn't say who's right or who's wrong. There's a governmental body, 
and there's these like resistance let's go with that there's the resistance and both of them do things that you know are extreme and yeah like you know is Cronenberg saying that when things change that can lead to you know they're essentially they they're somewhat like fascists they the you know they see this change in how culture is going and they say we have to control it we have to make regulations for this you know we can't just let things because at the end of the day it doesn't the movie doesn't really say oh this is actually bad it's just saying this is a thing that's happened and here's this governmental thing that sprung up in response to it but it's not like, you know, yeah, there's a lot of American filmmakers who would say, you know, oh, this is bad, and we need this government thing to, to stop it, you know. And he's also not saying that the, the, the other side, the people who are embracing it and, and saying, no, this is, this is good, you know, he's not saying that they're necessarily right either. He's, he's noting that this is a thing that happens, that when society changes, there, you know, it's not always the 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 case, and certainly not like quite equally throughout history. But there have been a number of times throughout human history where there has been a significant change. You know, maybe someone, maybe a person did a thing, or several people did a thing to lead that led to this change. Maybe it happened without, you know, yeah, despite people's actions or just. Yeah, something new came, you know. But when that happens, there's very often some governmental, you know, thing, there's there's someone coming in and saying we have to take control of this thing, and then there's there's people who say, you know, this thing is bad. We have to be, we have to fight it, you know. And let's see. Right, and and um, Kristen Stewart's Timlin is an interesting character. I think I've said everything that I want to about her before I get into to spoilers. But just yeah, she's she's very interesting, and and the performance is is absolutely spot on. Like, don't get me wrong. If you know, if Kristen Stewart was playing, well, yeah, I mean, I've already mentioned you know if she was playing Padme Amidala like this, I'd be like, okay, I'm sorry, this is completely wrong. I like Kristen Stewart, this is not the right performance for this material, you know. And, um, I think I will save my thoughts on, yeah, certainly some of these characters I'll only talk about later. Um, Yes, I, th I think I will move on from characters. So, oh, right, one, one thing I will say, this is definitely one of those movies where it is not... You're not necessarily going to empathize with the character, you know, identify or and or identify with, you know, the, the protagonist or other major characters you know you're you're not necessarily meant to it is the the kind of thing of like you ideally you you don't find them extremely boring but you know i can based on review some people did feel that way but no i i think this was the right way to you know and and that's also yeah some some people really hate it that the characters here were not super like you know, and and again you know Viggo Mortensen he has played much more appealing characters elsewhere so some people just see his face see his name and they think they're gonna get that again you know despite the fact that that's not really I mean I suppose there's a certain 
there's a homegrown charm to his history of violence character, but other than that, you know, it's not really, yeah. And and again, you know, Cronenberg realizes that the moment that you put someone that's really appealing in front of the audience, yeah, you know, we're we're gonna start making excuses for the things they do that we disagree with. You know, if we like someone enough, if someone is charismatic enough, confident enough, you know, I, I try to be better, but I know even my, even I myself have sometimes been been willing to, to overlook certain things. And, and yeah, you know, Cronenberg understands, you know, he's capable of putting appealing things in front of us. He does do it sometimes in some of his movies, but a lot of the time that's not what he does because he wants us to be more objective. He wants us to, to take in what we're seeing, not necessarily like it. Which again is of course something that a lot of people and I get it, you know, if you if you work you know, forty hour week and you barely have any spare time, you just you got you know, you have enough time to watch one movie, you want that movie to, to really appeal to you. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying that's not difficult to find. There's tons of movies out there that are just going to, to you know, yeah, make you feel things and, and you know, just, yeah. You know, honestly, like, recently I've been watching a lot of... Pixar and the the I'm I'm working my way through animated Disney, you know, a lot of the animated Disney I'd already watched, but some of them I haven't watched in like 20 years or something. So, you know, felt it was due. And yeah, you know, like I I'm not sure there's any let's see, what was the most recent Pixar movie I watched? Um I'll have that momentarily. Um yeah, uh, all the Pixar movies I've watched, I would say, yeah, you know, you can you can watch those, you can, you can watch those movies and be right. Monsters University was the most recent I've watched. I can't vouch for any past that, but yeah, you know, if you just if you want to sit down for two hours or less and just see something that's going to to make you feel something very clear and like maybe make you think, but certainly also just entertain you during you know. I I love Monsters Inc. I love Up. You know, I think absolutely amazing movies. I don't blame anyone for choosing to watch one of those over something like this. Now the let's see. The that might be about right, here we go. Yes. Um so, this is 97 minutes without end credits and 103 minutes with. And, let's see, I think if you give it about half an hour, you know, you'll, you'll know if it's your kind of movie. You know, if you, if you make your final decision based on the first 5 or 10 minutes, you might end up regretting that decision. But if you give it about half an hour... You know, because that opening really does hook you, and within half an hour you're gonna see, oh wow, it's really not. It, the movie is not purely about that particular mystery. So yeah, the best element of this movie was seeing Cronenberg return to the kind of thing that he used to be no, most known for, seeing some of these actors, you know, deliver these these performances that are. Not always unusual for Scott Speedman. I've never seen him like this before, but some of the others, it's not necessarily unusual, but there's just there's so much going on there. Like I I really don't understand people who just don't think highly of Kristen Stewart as a as an actor, because she can convey so much with just the a tiny little movement, just yeah. There's so much going on behind her eyes. Um, let's see, this is where I try to force myself to say worst aspect. I suppose I suppose the worst aspect is probably the way the mystery, like after such a hook, 
you know, some time passes without much, how, the, the way that the, the mystery is only intermittently dealt with. But I don't personally think that's a big problem. I do understand why some people were very turned off by it. And, yeah, something I saw a lot of user reviewers criticize about, you know, a lot of people said the movie was boring. And, let's see. Yeah, the thing I was most worried about was this, you know, one of, one of the things that Cronenberg, that perhaps mean that, that his movies are not quite as effective, you know, some of his characters you don't really connect with. And again, you know, I'm not saying you have to like them. It's fine to hate them, but some of his characters, we just don't really know, like, we we don't feel that much about one in either direction. And some of his characters, some, some of these characters basically exist mostly for the movie to happen the way that he wants it to, and that's... But, but yeah, that wasn't really the, the case here. And thing I was most looking forward to was a return to form, and this absolutely delivered. And the trailer does give at least a little too much away. I do think that it gives you a decent idea of what the movie is like. And let's see. The, the cover and poster do not give too much away. Um, yeah, and, and give you a decent idea of what the movie is like, and that brings us to the critics. So, on Rotten Tomatoes, this has an 80% certified fresh on the tomato meter, 285 reviews total, 227 of them fresh. And the average score is 6.80 out of 10. The audience score, based on over 100 verified ratings, is 50%. The average rating is 2.9 out of 5. And anything below, I believe it is a 3.5 out of 5, is considered a, a down vote. And this is when I... We'll just just briefly point out that the first Venom movie, though critics appropriately gave it a thirty percent, audiences gave it an eighty percent, and the the second Venom movie got a fifty-seven from critics and eighty-four from users. Yes, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave that there. Um, yeah, so the critics' consensus for this movie, quintessential, if not classic, Cronenberg, Crimes of the Future finds the director revisiting familiar themes with typically unsettling flair. And the audience says, it has a creative concept and some interesting ideas, but Crimes of the Future might feel like punishment if you aren't a big Cronenberg fan. Which, honestly, yeah, I, I've, that's fair enough. I, I do think, and that, I, I honestly... I am in favor of the audience says option that Rotten Tomatoes has added in, in recent years because that absolutely, yeah, you know, that tells you absolutely everything. Yeah, creative concepts, some interesting ideas, only for big Cronenberg fans. That's that's a really good, yeah, because I read a bunch of them and there's a bunch of really negative reviews, but that's absolutely... Yeah. Um, on Metacritic, it has a 68 from critics and, let's see, the, yeah, um, based on 55 critic reviews, 33 of them positive, 19 mixed, and 3 negative. What were the negative ones saying again? Yeah, one one person was basically too disgusted to say anything meaningful and says, you know, I I'm trying I, I 
would like to describe it better, but it defeats every reasonable attempt to try. And one person says that Cronenberg's transgressive kinks looks more and more played out. And one person, yeah, the, the last of the negative ones says, Within 20 minutes, Cronenberg has written himself into a hole when populated entirely by passive characters who do nothing but get cut up or watch other people get cut up. That is definitely... I, I can't really argue with that. And that's obviously... I can understand being really bothered by that. I found it too fascinating to be too bothered by that. But it's 100% fair. Like, if you... If, if that's you... Yeah. That's... I, I get wanting more dynamic characters. That's definitely a, a reasonable, yeah. Now the yes, so user the the user score is six point two based on eighty ratings, and there's thirty six user reviews. And the ratings, uh, let's see, thirty nine of the eighty are positive, twenty nine are mixed, and twelve are negative and let's see see I appreciate so this person gave it a zero out of ten at least they admit I only decided to watch it because I love horror movies and because it got generally favorable reviews on Metacritic you know maybe you should do ten seconds of research and recognize the name David Cronenberg and realize it's probably not going to be a completely it's not going to be a mainstream horror movie now and I say that as someone who loves mainstream horror now uh, yeah one person said pretty repulsive at times borderline unwatchable which you know for yeah that's how some that that in part depends on your tolerance for for gore you know, if if I tried to watch this movie when I was 12, I would also, you know, have, have not been able to, wouldn't have gotten through it. Let's see. You know, like, when, when I was, I think I was probably around 13 when I watched The Thing from 1982 for the first time. Yeah, you know, some of that gore really, really freaked me out. And... Yeah, one person says artsy fartsy and gives it a three out of ten. And, you know, that's not the only thing they say in the review, but again, that's just like, why do you need every movie to be made for you? One person says it's incoherent, but they also only watch thirty minutes. So again, we're way too used to things just being spelled out for us. Yeah, absolutely. Like, if you only watch 30 minutes, you're not really going to understand the movie. I, I, that's, that's, uh, that might be the only thing that I would agree with this person on. So, there are 375 user reviews on IMDb, or 312 if you hide spoilers. And I read the top 100 of the spoiler free ones. 18 of those 100 gave it a 1 out of 10, 13 gave it a 2, 6 gave it a 3, 11 gave it a 4, 10 gave it a 5, 12 gave it a 6, 20 gave it a 7, 13 gave it an 8, 5 gave it a 9, and only 2 gave it a 10. So, yeah, a lot of people really do not like this movie. Honestly, if not for Cronenberg, I might not have watched a movie that was this low rated on by, by users on... Well, if not for the fact that also the critics gave it high regard. At, at this point, user ratings are not as usual, as useful as they once were. Now, the in, in determining if a movie is just actually good or bad, or if, you know, if it's just not what people expected, I really, I hope that all these websites get, you know, that there's a change in the future where... If the thing that, a, that, that makes you give a low rating to a movie is that it wasn't what you expected 
or you know maybe it doesn't align with your values that there's just a separate category don't get me wrong there's movies that i can appreciate the artistry of but i'm like well the it's it's abhorrent values you know i as someone very far left find it completely repulsive yeah you know i i think it would yeah moving on I, I personally do try to rate based on the the actual quality of the movie, since that is what these sites are primarily for. May, or maybe, yeah, maybe there should just be a separate website where you could go and say, you know, this is what I expected, this is what I got, kind of thing. And, yes, so the overall rating from users on IMDb is 5.8 based on 39,000 ratings, 21.6% gave it a 6, 19.5 gave it a 7, 16.0 gave it a 5, 11.7 gave it 8, 8.9 gave it 4, 5.7 gave it 1, wow, 5.2 gave it 3, 4.1 gave it 9, 3.7 gave it 10, and another 3.7 gave it 2, so yeah, a lot of people really do not like the movie. There are 289 links in the external reviews section. The special effects are amazing. You know, at this point, if you have the money, yeah, practical effects can be almost seamless. You know, the they got really good in the the late 70s and have just gotten even better and better and yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of 80s movies that I hold in high regard, in part, you know, yeah, I just mentioned The Thing 1982, one of my favorite movies. The gore in that is just amazing. It really, like, really screws with your mind to see the human body, you know, morphed in these unnatural ways. Now, the, the let's see... But, but yeah, a lot of practical effects in, in this movie. I am not sure that there was any... I, d I don't think I off the top of my head can think of something in this where the effect was not practical. Uh, there's makeup, there's uh, like prosthetic where, you know, yeah, they're, they're cutting bodies open. So obviously some prosthetics there. The, the internal organs are incredibly realistic looking. And let's see. Yeah, and the, the, the violence and gore, you know, if you're just looking for, like, something where, you know, people get hurt. You know, if you, if you watched Scanners and that's Cronenberg to you, you know, if you if you didn't look past the surface, if you just saw, oh, people are getting shot and heads are exploding and, and such, this movie is not really gonna do that much for you. Like, there's some the the gore is intense, but it's not really the, the you know the big difference is that here it is spectacle, like in in universe, like. A lot of the time in this movie, when when there's intense gore, it's fascinating rather than repulsing to characters, and it's not actually because someone is dying or or killing someone or the, that sort of thing. And yeah, um, as we have seen with other Cronenberg, the the body horror is at times made like. It's somewhat erotic in a in a way, you know. And honestly, I think this is probably the second best. Like the first is still Videodrome to to me, but I think this is the the second best of of those of of his movies. It's it's really really impressive the way that yeah just. The uh, what's the word? Um, some I 
there there are a number of articles online that discuss how the film is transgender allegory that is awesome i am really really glad i don't feel qualified to to talk about it so i'm just going to i'm going to put the link to yeah in in the description box and that's that's going to have to be it for that because I just I really don't feel qualified to to talk on it but I'm I'm so glad that that has been been read into it you know trans trans issues another one of those things that we really have to you know it's extremely important that we stop transphobia that we we do everything we can to fight transphobia which right now is literally leading to legislation like a phobia misinformation is leading to actual legislation which is hurting real people this is not just you know if if you're transphobic if you look at trans people and you feel slightly uncomfortable get over it there's a lot of places online where you can get informed and you can get over it Stop trying to make the rest of the world conform to your standards. Trans people are not hurting anyone by their very existence. There are some individual trans people who are out there hurting, but not to a greater extent than cis people. And there are trans people who are calling those trans people out. You know, it's not like the trans community refuse to hold accountable the the trans people, the, the very, very small percentage of trans people who are actually hurting people. They're not conservative. That's a conservative. Conservatives do not hold each other accountable. If you're uh, an actual groomer, an actual pedophile, as long as you say something conservatives like, like, I'm not sure, I think the only case I know of where conservatives just completely rejected someone who was saying, like, pro-pedophile stuff was Milo Yiannopoulos because, because it was gay pedophilia. That was, that was the line, you know. The, the actual straight pedophiles are being backed up by conservatives. They're not being called out en masse. Now, yeah, um, my rating for this movie is seven surgeries to make the insides look beautiful out of ten. And I I would like to think that in the future this will get a bit of a reevaluation. You know, not not from critics. They got it right, but yeah, regular viewers, that would, yeah, that would be great. I think it deserves much better than it's gotten so far online by users. So, that brings us to the ranking. And, yeah, I think I have fully, yes. So, the full ranking... Worst to Best, The Brood, The Dead Zone, Naked Lunch, Eastern Promises, Crimes of the Future 2022, Scanners, Spider, History of Violence, A Dangerous Method, Existence, Fly, and Videodrome. And there we go. That brings us to the thoughts section. So from here on out, there will be spoilers for everything in this movie. And let's start with notes taken while watching. So, yeah, we open on the the kid, you know, being told, Brecker being told not to, to eat, Brecken being told not to eat anything. And, yeah, you know, he's he's eating this, this plastic in, you know, yeah, and and 
I really appreciate the detail that you know it's it's she she mentions it later the the mother um uh crap was Ju Juna Juna yeah Juna mentions it later you know there there would be this uh, what what did she say it was like it, like acidic like drool and yeah I mean that would explain how a human being would be able to eat plastic. You know, because, you, you know, we can't do it right now, not for lack of trying. But yeah, acid, acidic drool, and, and she mentions, you know, some if it got on my skin, it burned. But sometimes it got on his skin and it didn't bother him, you know. And, you know, she is so... It, it so offends her to her core that she smothers him with a pillow. And I really appreciate, like... Cronenberg doesn't hold back. Hon honestly, I'm I can understand if someone like walks out at, at seeing that, you know. But yeah, just like we see him lying in bed, and we see her standing there and slowly approaching, and like immediately you can tell this I this is this is going in a very very yeah very mean spirited very very ugh, direction. You know, she she gets the pillow puts it over his face and he's like struggling you know it's 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 very reassuring to me to know that obviously in real life he's not you know they were they they did something so that he could still easily breathe under there they're not actually going to you know risk smothering a, yeah um and you know she calls and and says you know so yeah let's yeah I guess she's calling the resistance I forget if they actually called it that but I'm gonna be calling it the resistance the you know the movement that Lang is is part of the that make the 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 purple candy bars I think they call them and yeah you know she calls and says so you know I gave you the address you know come pick up the you know the the creature that you know, my husband calls our son. Yes, the Brecken thing, you know, and just right away we see this, like, this is clearly a, like, it takes a lot for uh, a mother to kill her own child. This is not something, you know, it's not that it's never happened, but, like, even, like, very intense cases of, like, postpartum or, you know, like like severe mental illness. Not to not to yeah. Uh, keeping in mind, people with mental health issues are more likely to be the victims than perpetrators of violence. But you know, right away the movie tells us this is you know a a big thing. This is a a. You know, this is changing society. This this is a situation that has mothers kill their own children. And we later see her in prison, and she says that she confessed. You know, because she wasn't trying to get away with it. She just felt compelled to, to kill her own child because of how he, he was. And let's see... Yeah, you know, and and Lang arrives to and and you know, yeah, finds their son dead there and is is deeply distraught. Obviously, it's the fourth one this week, and yeah, we see Saul in in the the bed. I quite appreciate that. Literally, the first time we see him, he is cradled in technology, and it's that like. To the people in the movie, this bed is like, duh, of course. What do you have? Yeah. It anticipates your pain so that you sleep well. What? Yeah, you know, the, because, you know, with, with our eyes, with the audience's eyes, it, like, it, it looks so, like, off-putting and, and, like, yeah, you know, like it it looks like he's it like like a big monster that's like embracing him. 
you know, but his life, Saul Tensor's life, is is deeply affected by the technology. You know, the 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 bed, the the breakfast eating thing, you know, and and yeah, him being cut open for for the organs, you know, his his is a life that could not exist the way it does without the technology that aids him throughout the the movie and you know he's yeah he's he's in part struggling because the technology is not working ideally you know and that is something that we we do see in in the real world there are some people who rely on modern technology and sometimes it fails and yeah it can really what's the word um, yeah, has a has a strong negative effect on their their quality of life, and yeah, you know they they talk about you know the bed needs what was it needs new software something like that to to anticipate his pain, and you know he he says I you know I I think this might be the last organ I can produce. And and she says something like you you said that before, and so far it hasn't been right. And he says one day I will be right. You know, one day he won't be able to live the way he's living right now, and that is again you know that is something that we sometimes have to deal with as a society, finding that we are living in a way that is untenable and. Again, you know, when it comes to climate change, that is a pretty significant, like, the, you know, a lot of things have to change in order for us to, yeah, keep, you know, keep living on the planet. And no, Elon, we can't all just go to Mars. And let's see. Yeah, um, they're, they're disappointed by how small the new organ is, which I would say in in its defense it's cold, but it's an interior organ. Does he have a fever, maybe? No, wait, that makes your body hot. Yeah, whatever. And yeah, they, they the, uh, let's see, the registry requires, you know, things to be a certain way and you know one of them mentions that and the other's like oh right you know so it's very clear this is not you know uh can we you know can we skip class let's let's do let's let's get a little wild here no this is this is the law there's no other option here and it's affecting their ability to carry out art you know i i don't think it's accidental that the the thing here is yeah you know that the the first time we hear about the the organ registry thing it's talking about how government regulation can sometimes negatively affect art and you know there's been there's a lot of pieces of art that could have been so much more if not for basically prudes who had way too much power as as sensors and yeah they're they're walking down the street and we see people cutting on, on the street and yeah we meet Whippet and Timlin the mouse I I really appreciate how like you know keeping in mind you know Kristen Stewart Conventionally attractive, like turns a lot of heads, willing to play this this very mousy, you know, repressed character. Like, if Kristen Stewart wanted to, she could have the the career of like of a classic Hollywood beauty. She could play role after role where the camera ogles her, and that's just not what she's interested in. You know, she realizes that there's so much more.
And again, I'm not saying I blame the women who, you know, there was a long time where that was the only chance a young actress had of a long and very profitable career. And, you know, there's a lot of them, once they've had a career in Hollywood, there's not really, there's a lot of other people who will not take them no matter how talented they are. So they basically had to make a lot of money during the career so that they could live off of that for the rest of you know there's the even you know and some men some misogynists are going to be like oh well why can't they just get married there's a lot of men who won't marry you know actresses who've you know really sexualized themselves on camera now then we have the yeah they talk about you know this is new vice the the changing of the body and you know whip it outright says you know maybe it you know maybe it could lead to a, a bad place the way that the the body is changing and i like i said in the review i really appreciate they don't actually they don't have evidence of this they just say you know they're basically going off emotion to be fair there is a slight argument he does say you know People don't feel pain anymore. Pain is necessary. Pain warns us about things. You know, there's definitely some truth to that. There, you know, I, I don't think as wonderful as it would be, you know, like hypothetically wonderful would be to live in a world without pain. Yeah, there probably would be some negative, you know, yeah, a, a negative al alternative. And that's not to say that, you know, if you are causing pain don't use that as an excuse to keep doing it but you know other than that they're not actually they're not quite they're they're not pointing to you know like hypothetically let's say oh you know now that people don't feel pain anymore well you know some people have gone out and like killed people just to feel something you know okay fair enough that's a problem. That's something that needs to be, you know, but no, they're just, they're, they're, it's, it's sort of abstract. You know, they, they talk about the fact that people don't feel pain anymore whilst in the room with Saul, who's clearly in pain, you know, oh, that's a, that's, you know, that by itself must mean that we have to, to do something, you know, they're, they're putting putting into action a plan that is not based on having that much information yet and let's see we have the right the the there's that line about you know everyone's qualified to do surgery now and yeah timlin and whippet probe souls organs and caprice films it until timlin points out that that's you know that's not allowed and yeah i mean it is essential it's a sort of like let's see what would be the real world equivalent i guess a witness statement maybe or something you know but there's clearly more to it the the way that Timlin and Whippet react to it you know there the, the there's a lot of characters in this movie who share David Cronenberg's fascination with the human body which you know to be fair there's i think we probably all have some you know some some thoughts on what the the you know, what we're comfortable with the human body doing and such. And, yeah, the, the, you know, they talk about, you know, if, if, if people who were, were, you know, not, no longer as human, you know, if, the, if enough of them had, had kids, would, the would some of those kids technically not be human you know and and that's yeah that's where we get into this thing of 
the, a fear of change. The, this idea that if something is different, then it is bad. You know, it's not, because, like, throughout history, you know, yeah, like, every so often, we can, we can note that, you know, here's someone who, you know, genetically is very different from their great-great-grandparents or something, you know, like, there, there have been, ah, let's see, I forget, I think, I want to say it was the Native Americans, some of the, some of the, um, some of the people who came, I'm not sure it was the, was it the, um, uh, the pilgrims, I think it might have been the, the, you know, before that, like, uh, con conquistadors, or what, you know, the, uh, some, something like that, you know, the, the Spanish, you know, they, they, I believe it was them who introduced a number of diseases to Native Americans who, you know, these Spaniards, they had these diseases as kids, they weren't, so so they they were they were passive carriers i want to say is the the term whereas these native americans they hadn't had these diseases as kids so when they got you know yeah when they they got these as as adults a, a bunch of them them died you know it's it's very very tragic loss of life and yeah, you know, clearly, like, you know, we, we know today that technically all of humanity, let's see, I want to say, was it Africa? We, we originally all started from, and then we started moving to, to other parts of, of the world, and today, you know, there's people who look incredibly different than other people, even though we all originated in this, yeah, so that is just something that happens you know f over over time but this this governmental agency has been made to to make sure that it doesn't you know yeah i i thought that was quite an interesting choice this yeah that cronenberg makes where basically this the, these people with with some power feel like it's it's okay to to start saying you know this isn't a real human being because their their dna is is different from you know a few generations back you know and and that is again that is something you know today we are dealing with there is a lot of people who have power were convinced that you know there's there's a lot of fascists here in the West who say if you're not white, straight, cis, you know if you weren't, let's see, I think the word is native born, you know if if you if you're an immigrant, you know, so not all of them say that you have to only be one of these things, and not all of them would specify all of those things. But if you look at the the movement as a whole, yeah, you know there are, there are people who are just one of those things who are treated as less than human. You know, you hear it in the way conservative media talk about you know minorities, and you see it in yeah, like again, you know, laws passed and just the way they'll they'll treat people face to face and let's see yeah um they talk about the the bed has to be synced to the chair and <laughs> router and burst here the you know or, or yeah realize Saul has an original Sark, and yeah, you know, uh, I have had run-ins with the Alias fandom, the you know the J.J. Abrams show. Yeah, uh, Sark seems to get women very excited. L later in the movie, they they both get naked. Yeah, that's the f and and that's great. That's one hundred percent. You know. 
I, I, um, crap, what's his name again? The, the actor, I can imagine he probably gets a, a bit of an ego boost if, if he has any idea, I, I suppose it's probably, David Anders, you know, and dude's charming, that's, yeah, um, let's see, yeah, and they, the, the, they talk about how the Sark was originally for autopsy, and Caprice describes it as her paintbrush. And yeah, just a, a really, what's the word? Like Cronenberg is, is you know, taking this thing and, and saying, you know, and, and that is, all, yeah, it's also true that throughout history, you know, there are certain things that used to be thought of as one thing, and now it's, it's something else entirely. And, yeah, once we see the actual, the, the, the yeah, the, the performance pieces, we see, you know, it's sensual, possibly even sexual, for the performers and the onlookers. And that is the thing, like, today in the real world, you know, there are, like, sex shows. I'm not sure any of them are considered art, but art is meant to provoke a reaction from people. And, you know, there are, yeah, the... the Yeah, I think I've said everything that I had for that. And let's see. Then we have the... Um, yeah, Timlin says, surgery is the new sex. And they talk about the... Um, what's it called? Yeah, yeah, the, the fact that, you know, art has a there there's sometimes a connection between art and pain and then they mention that sleep there's a connection between sleep and pain and the I'm I'm not sure I I've heard of sleep and pain um Right, okay, so, yeah, uh, new, yeah, sleep affects pain. Lack of proper sleep has the potential to increase pain and sensitivity to the pain. Okay, so that's what they're, they're going off, yeah. And, and, yeah, certainly, like, a lot of people have been able to transform their pain into art that can help, you know, others, you know, I, th I think art has a incredible potential to help us process pain. And, yeah, we see one person vomit purple, and it's clear that Lang is not surprised or even bothered by that. And, yeah, you know, this thing of, yeah, trying to, to what's the word? trying to create people who um, what's the word um, yeah people who can survive on these synthetic uh, th things such as plastic and I will say I'm not 100% certain if he meant for it to happen or if it was just he knew there was some chance that it might. And then we have the... Yeah, they, they talk about, you know, the... To some people, it's like... It's, it's the fascination of, of seeing... Discovering a new species of animal, but for others, it's like a Picasso. And several characters ask if Caprice is Saul's 
lover or if they just work together. And and there's also talk about who, you know, who is the artist? Is it Saul or is it Caprice? Is Saul willing these organs into into being? And you know, so yeah, this Cronenberg thing of the body changing in a way that is that that reflects the reality of the the person. Now I have a lot of notes left. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna speed run some of these. So let's see. Yeah, they talk about you know the interval is is shortening between these different organs. And then they sew the guy's lips shut, which, again, it's just one of those things. It's just like, oh, please don't do that. That's so, so uncomfortable. And he's already had his, his eyes, you know, sewn, sewn shut. What I will say, uh, the, so the character is apparently called Clinic. Great listener. He's all ears. And... Yeah, he, he dances, and Adrian Berceau is quite critical. You know, he's he's a better dancer than a conceptual artist. And, yeah. And... Um, let's see. And, uh, yes, uh, Lang and, and Sol talk, and Lang you know, suggests a real autopsy and offers up, you know, Brecken, his his eight-year-old. And I really appreciate how, like, you know, Saul actually is like, you, you have the dead body of your eight-year-old son, and, you know, Lang is, yeah, I'm his father. You know, just, like, the, the yeah, even for Saul, this is kind of extreme, and and Lang, you know that I mean that is the thing. Lang wanting this really public autopsy, you know I mean there's some people who would say he's the worst parent than than Juna, that a a good father would you know I mean sure autopsy obviously try to find out, you know but after that then you actually. You know, yeah, like have have the kid buried. Don't public autopsy seems in, in incredibly bad taste. You know, and and in this world, it's like you know, it takes a little. Saul takes a little convincing, but he does agree to it. And the you know the, that brings up this idea of of art as a political statement, which many times throughout history, a, a lot of art has been intending to convey a point of view and and in some cases been able to actually affect public perception even laws you know and yeah the idea of an an autopsy of of someone whose insides would look very very different from others insides yeah that you know the, there is a there there's something there that is an actual yeah I'm not saying we should do it in real life but you can appreciate where Cronenberg is is coming from there and um, let's see yes and then um, Caprice in in preparing for the the autopsy gets naked and gets in the in the sark and the the you know Saul using the 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 joystick to to you know he he cuts her and it clearly like she hasn't has a reaction to it and he's like oh oh I'm sorry and she's like no no, no keep going and 
the the you know he suggests maybe this could be part of the show and she's like maybe this could just be or or do i have them Any, anyway one of them says maybe show and the other is like maybe this could just be for us which you know i i am aware there are a number of performers who have trouble you know i think i myself i try to have a good distinction but yeah you know what what do you show the world and what do you keep for just the people close to you and yeah they end up cuddling up during the cutting up and yeah the the soul is undercover and there's that thing about you know it's it's like a protest he's not okay with what's happening to the body especially his own and yeah and new vice was meant to be called evolution disturbance force or something like that but they wanted uh, you know they they say it wasn't sexy enough you know obviously what they mean is it didn't attract enough attention and that is also something you know throughout history sometimes they've you know, decisions like that have been made based on what is going to appeal to enough people that we can get, you know, yeah, funding, for example. And I quite appreciate that there's actually, there's more passion expressed about the growths than this murder, you know, the, the like... Saul, at this point, knows that this eight-year-old was murdered, and, you know, yeah, he's a little, it takes a little convincing, but he doesn't seem to feel as strongly, or at least not show, uh, you know, as, yeah, about these, these growths. And he sees a doctor for his political problem. And, yeah, the inner beauty pageant is mentioned, and the, the organ zipper is like a flasher raincoat. And, and I like, you know, Saul accidentally, you know, he says, you heard what Timlin said, sex is surgery. And, and Caprice corrects it, N no, she said, surgery is the new sex. You know, and that is, I, I quite appreciate that little distinction there because, yeah, that's not quite the same thing. Sex is surgery versus surgery is the new sex. Those are two, yeah, so, so, so yeah, quite appreciate that. And, and yeah, um, Saul talks to Juna. And she keeps calling Brecken a thing. And it talks about the, the acid. And... Yeah. Just... You know, she's clearly... She, she doesn't... She doesn't feel regret over it. You know, she's... She's sure to mention that she's no longer with Lang. You know, we're exes now, after, you know, he... And, and she talks about that, you know, she still feels disgusted that Brecken... That, that she carried and gave birth to, to Brecken. And, again, this, you know, that is... There, there are some, uh, you know, the, the... But that's a very, that's a very extreme thing for uh, a mother to say about her own child. And I'm not saying that there's something wrong with women who do feel that. You know, they, obviously, they should get the the mental health care that they they need, but you know, the, the movie is positioning it as this, you know, pointing at, yeah. Yes. Um, and then we have the yeah, uh, Lang mentions, you know, th there's going to be a really pup... Or was it it? Crap. I, I'm struggling to recall, but... 
No, I, th I think it was him who said, you know, we're going to have a very public display. It will really resonate. And I think it's Whippet who says he's got the fever. He can't turn away. And then we meet, I think her name is Odile. And she's had plastic surgery, but not the the kind that you know not not the traditional kind not the the i think she uses the word beautifying you know it was uh, yeah and and you know caprice there's clearly something between these uh, these two women the the um, and and yeah you know caprice does go on to to get these little indents on her on her forehead which clearly Saul is is bothered by, you know, and and that does yeah you know he is objecting to how his body is changing against his will, and she goes out and chooses to change her body in a in a you know different yeah they're essentially going in in opposite directions now and. Yeah, turns out Whippet registers people for the inner beauty pageant and points out that while it makes emotional sense for Saul to be part of the inner beauty pageant, it does not make logical sense because of how he, you know, what he does with the yeah his his art and let's see and then we have the yeah um yeah timlin and and soul get sexual and we get the the fantastic line where Saul says, "I'm sorry, I'm not very good at old sex," you know, because at this point he is so used to, you know, it. it someone reminds me, of, yeah, he's so used to these surgeries, which is the new sex, you know, for for him and those, you know, for Caprice, for those watching. It reminds me somewhat of like someone who's very deep into like fetish trying to have vanilla sex you know it's yeah they've they've basically forgotten how you know and and that's not i'm not saying that there's something wrong with with fetish sometimes there is but not by you know not automatically it's just different it's not vanilla that's all uh, you know as long as everyone consents there's nothing wrong with it and the let's see um right the the then we have the the um, you know this, you know have you tried one of these chocolate bars it's a revolution okay so what you're saying it is it was not made by American chocolate makers and yeah you know the the let's see yeah I think I've already mentioned the the idea of you know plastic if 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 we had a generation or you know in general you have just future generations were able to eat plastic yeah, that would, you know, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, I, like, I don't know how that would look in real life. Like, I'm not, you know, advocating for some kind of, like, genetic experimentation or something. But hypothetically, if it did happen, yeah, like, we, we currently do have huge problems with all this non-degradable plastic. And, yeah, and, and you know, now at, at this point in the movie, we also see the, you know, the the eating problem is to be solved with technology as well and 
yeah, that's also something like, you know, if you look at the history, like so much has changed in how human beings produce and consume food. You know, if you go back far enough, yeah, we actually used to just like grow stuff or, or pick berries and, and make food like that. And now, like, I'm not sure how, like, it's almost, it's almost difficult to fully grasp the the enormity of the the you know mass produce yeah mass produced food today you know across the world how many animals are in factory farms for example and and i like the thing of you know router and burst show up and there's that thing of you know you called us i called you your technology called us so, you know, and, and he's like, but I'm, but I'm eating. And one of them's like, perfect time, you know. So the technology is, is taking over. He's not getting to make these decisions on his own. He didn't mean to call them, but the technology made that decision for him. He doesn't want them to come in, but they're like, but your technology, though, you know, and, and I don't think we'll ever, that, I believe that is a, a, conflict that will always be ongoing there will always be a conflict between you know us us human beings and our technology our tools because again you know like i you know earlier i quoted you know cronenberg as, as saying you know like was it like a baseball bat or something you know like a ah you know what i think i might be able to find it real quick um let's see it was yeah of uh let's see a club or a stone you know the the yeah you know it started with that and now we have these these machines all over you know i i realized the irony of saying this into a camera on the so video that will be that will go on the internet but yeah you know like i'll uh, honestly, I, I I try, but I probably do rely too much on technology in my day to day life, and and yeah, you know, there's certain things, certain certain decisions that you know, like before all this technology, we would make these decisions our own, you know, some individually, some as a group, and now they're being made for us, you know, and and that's. There's, there's good and bad to that because the fact that so many decisions are made, you know, some decisions, yeah, it's fine to give up, you know, but then there's other decisions, you know, and, and it's a conflict. We have to, we have to be careful not to let too many decisions be made, but also not to, you know, stubbornly hold on and say, no, I want to make every single decision myself. You know, you, you can't keep up with modern society if you insist that every decision is made by you personally. So the, you know, yeah, we have to make sure that the decisions are made by, you know, people that we trust, ideally. So, so yeah. Um, then we have the, let's see. Yeah, there's that line about, you know, feeding on industrial food. And Brecken was the first one born. And, you know, Lang honestly admits, you know, I can't explain. I, I get that a surgery done on me should not logically become genetic and be passed on by... And see. And, and Caprice has a very interesting line once the autopsy is, is underway. We've all wanted to see an autopsy because we believe the body to be empty. And we have to, um, what was it? We have to confirm whether or not the body truly is empty. And we see his organs, and it really is just horrifying looking. And, you know, Capri says, there will be more autopsies. We will map this. And the, yeah, the firmware texts drill laying to death and let's see 
yeah, there's the line born that way. And we learn, and, and yeah, Brecken was born that way, and we couldn't, you know, imagine if that bit of, if, if that became public knowledge, you know, imagine what that would do to, to society if people knew about this change. And we find out, you know, it was Timlin who did the work to, to make sure that it, it would not come out. And, yeah, uh, Sol points out Lang will be a martyr. And Cope points out, you sound like you're a believer. And Sol has the excellent line, in order to be effective undercover, part of you has to believe. And, and there's that line, I almost thought I was feeling. And there was a, she had a dream about a family autopsy where Lang, Juna, and Brecken were being autopsied and Saul and Caprice were both performing the autopsy. And, and then, you know, yeah, it's time to try it. And, you know, she's filming as he, he bites into this and there's a single tear and there's a smile and then we don't see you know, what happens next, and, um, hold on, there it is, yeah, um, so the, let's see, right, um, Wikipedia notes, you know, his mouth twitches into a smile as the chair finally quiets, you know, this was what he was missing. This was the the source or the solution by the the yeah. And let's see. But yeah, you know, I, I you know I mentioned earlier I really appreciate like Lang you know working for the resistance like, if not for that chocolate bar, that, that guy wouldn't have died right in front of him, you know, who's, like, vomiting up the, the purple. Doesn't seem to, you know, it doesn't make him completely, you know, like, he doesn't, he doesn't change because of that. Maybe it's happened, you know, the, the, the Cope mentions a cop dying. I'm not sure if that was him. Or if it was a different one. I, I can imagine it's probably happened multiple times in this world. You know, so it's not like the Resistance are these complete angels. And on the other hand, this government agency is lying to people about this really important thing. You know, they're doing everything they can to cover up this change. You know, in like... Ideally, what you would want them to do is understand, you know, to, to do some research, try to find out, is it actually dangerous? And if it's not dangerous, make sure people know that it's not dangerous. You know, you don't, you don't have to classify it as dangerous just because it's different. You know, but there are a lot of people, there's a lot of people in government who don't see it that way. They, they assume if it's not the norm already if it's if it's new it must be dangerous and yeah I, I really appreciate the the this very intelligent and honest exploration of that and I think that might actually be I forget if I yeah I don't actually have anything for the next section so that is it. Now I'm just real quick gonna see if I, I think I've said everything that I wanted to. Um, I definitely appreciate that it is right. The, yes, the ending. I get why some people found it to be unsatisfying because it is, you know. 
at the end of the day, we, we don't really know. It's, it's not quite clear, based on this ending, what direction are we going, you know. But by the end, Lang is dead. Brecken's corpse has been defiled, I guess, twice over now, really. Um, you know, yeah, it's like Saul knows the truth, but he doesn't really have any proof. It's all, it's, it's you know, just word of mouth. Who's going to believe him? We don't know if, you know, what the future holds for this, this world. If more and more people really are going to eat plastic and, and be fine with that, or if the, the, this fascist government is going to completely take control of, of the situation, you know, and I personally do love how open his endings are, Cronenberg's endings. I can appreciate that this one, I'm not saying that I necessarily think it should have been more cut and dry, but I can understand why, you know, some people might have felt that there should have been a more, yeah, clean ending. You know, we open on the realization that some, you know, some people are able to eat plastic and others find, you know, some find that horrifying, some find it, you know, to be a positive. And, yeah, I mean, the, the ending, you know, it was perhaps... I mean, the fact that Saul, you know, he's been, he's, he's in pain and he's growing all these new organs, you know, it appears to line up with the idea of the, the, yeah, the, the plastic eating. So, you know, and, and Saul is not related to Lang. So it is, it is happening, and, and nor was he part of the group, the, the resistance, you know, so it's, Spontaneous. It's somewhat spontaneous, at least. It is happening to, you know, people who are not directly affiliated with the, the resistance. And, and yeah, um, personally, I was satisfied, which, you know, I'm not, I don't say that for every, you know, there are movies that I love where the ending is not my favorite thing, but I, I, it is definitely the, the, what's the word, there, there is a, yeah, um, no, I actually, yeah, I think I've said everything that I, Yes, now I remember. Yes, um, it it was interesting. The all these all these twists about you know these these multiple factions and undercover agents and all this stuff. You know, I I was not expecting that from this movie, but yeah, you know, it's at at this point when you sit down to watch the Viggo Mortensen and the David Cronenberg movie. You expect there to be some major secret to his character that, yeah. Um, I think that that is everything. Um, yeah, and, you know, it's really only, like, yeah, you don't realize right away in the movie that what you're seeing, there is this, like, it, it is not, we're not only seeing you know, an, an artist dealing with frustrating red tape and such, there is this, like, spy thing going on where, you know, like, Adrian Berceau goes and tells Saul, you should see Dr. Nassatir, and he, you know, like, it's, it's one of those things where, like, each person knows parts of of the whole you know it reminded me of what they said in tenet you know this thing of if nobody knows ev nobody knows everything and that means there's more safety for 
you know, because like, why doesn't Doctor Nesseteer just go see Saul at the the clinic show? You know, but no, it is this like network. And um, I think that might be about what I had to say. Yeah, I, I really like the, the fact that like every major character has a reaction. They don't have the same reaction, but no one is disinterested in this whole thing of the performance art surgery, for example, and these various things, like the way that, you know, like it, it is a movie that says humanity is changing on a fundamental level and it affects people. Like no one just does not care about it. Everyone is drawn to it or repulsed by it and some people who you know some some people are honest about their reaction and some people try to hide it instead and yeah um let me know in the comments what is you know I should have thought of some some of that before I started that sentence um What's your favorite Cronenberg theme? What you know? What is the the most compelling idea he's put forth in one of his movies? If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page. One two more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested review for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week, reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie. I try to do a daily one on a Marvel TV show. I am most of the way through Season 4 Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm doing them chronologically, though I did already do all of the Marvel Netflix, Netflix Marvel ones. I do a weekly horror thing, which right now I am working my way through Ash vs. Evil Dead. I'm still quite early in the run. I do a weekly video on a Star Wars animated show that I haven't already done. I am nearly done with Young Jedi Adventures, and recently the Review and Thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog, which was Kiss next week. I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.